This is the Caterham 7 620R and it's the most crazy, bonkers, stupid, insane 7 that Caterham has ever made. And naturally we want to do a trap battle with it and we were planning on racing it against a KTM crossbow, but we couldn't get our hands on one of those. So we've got another KTM to race it against instead, that one. The KTM Super Duke 1290R is as leery as a motorcycle gets, and it's easily a match for the Caterham in the scary stakes. But how will it measure up against the 620R in a time lap around our track battle circuit at Blyton Park? We've got some really slippery conditions here today, so obviously the car with its four wheels has an advantage over the bike because it's only got two. And so what we're going to make it do is, after this first turn, the car is going to have to do a donut here before heading off up the track, whereas the bike can just come whizzing straight through. Seeing as we've made the car do a donut, we decided to add a couple of obstacles into the rest of the race to make both the car and the bike do to make things just a little bit more interesting. So behind me, we have a braking box and both vehicles have to go into there and come to a complete standstill. Otherwise, I get a time penalty. The second obstacle we've added is a simple slalom. So both the car and the bike, they'll enter from this side and then they'll have to weave through the four cones we've laid out before blasting off down through the rest of the circuit. We've enlisted the help of Simon Roots to ride the KTM. He's the editor of Fast Bikes magazine and he'll be doing his best to represent the biking fraternity. Well, Simon, this is a serious bit of kit. Can you tell us a little bit about this bike? Yes, this is a KTM Super Duke 1290R. And if you walk into a KTM dealership, you won't walk out with one unless you've given them about £14,000. And so what does this bike have on it that's worth £14,000? Well. KTM would argue that it's got the lot really. It's got a 1301cc engine. 1 1.3 litre engine that you're sat on? Yes, in car terms it's a 1.3. <laughs> it's a V-twin engine and uh, because of the size and the configuration it just gives you a hell of a lot of grunt. Right, so what are you getting? Tell us what you're getting. Well, KTM are claiming 180 brake horsepower. We've tested it at 150 at the rear wheel. So that's that's enough to be getting on with. <laughs> it is, considering how heavy is it? It's 189 kilos. So you've got to be pretty brave to ride this kind of thing. Uh, well, that's the thing. Uh, KTM have packed this full of electronics. Okay. So on the braking side of things, they've got massive Brembo monoblock brakes, which do the business. Yeah. And if they need a little bit more help, then KTM have got a Bosch ABS system, which you can turn off if you want. Also on the electronic side, you've got traction control, uh, which works in tandem with the uh, rider mode settings. And again, you can turn that off if you want. So if you want to pull wheelies and do skids and do burnouts, then turn it off and then away you go. OK, well, I'm going to wish you the best of luck because I can hear it's now starting to rain. So, yeah, but yeah. anyway, good luck, mate. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Auto Express's resident racing driver Owen Mildenhall will be driving the Caterham. If he gets beaten by a bike, we're going to make him eat his racing overalls. So Owen, you're going to be driving the Caterham 7 620R, which I think is the fastest road car, isn't it, that Caterham's ever made? Yeah, it's the most extreme road car they've ever made. So we've got a 2 litre Duratec engine with a supercharger. A supercharger? Yeah. The Caterham 7 wasn't fast enough already? No, exactly. And it's got, that means it's got about 300, 310 horsepower, but it only weighs just over 500 kilograms. So it's pretty extreme. And I've driven lots of Caterhams, and they're already pretty extreme, but this takes it to a whole new level. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's got a, it's got a sequential gearbox, which is great. So I'm used to that from racing. Um, but it's got no ABS, no traction control, obviously, and a very lightly cut slick tyre. And obviously with the weather we've got, if we get lots of standing water, that could be a bit of an issue. But we'll see how we get on. It's going to be fun. Well, I'll say just how fast you can go in it, but you will definitely be needing this, otherwise you're not Thank going you anywhere, mate. Well, you will, but you're going in a straight line, but that'll be it. Right, then, Good Let's luck. <laughs> Typically, just as we're about to start the race, the brewing storm arrived and completely drenched the track. With such tricky conditions, it was a good job our racers were starting halfway round the track from each other. Three, two, one, go. Simon starts off with a wheelie. Which is very brave considering the conditions, which can't be nice for either racer. Oh, that's horrible, horrible, horrible. As the bike leaves the slalom, Owen is doing his mandatory donut. Might have got a little bit of heat in my tyres, but I doubt it. Three, two, one, gun it! It's really coming down hard on the rain now. That should make the braking box fun. Right, we're 
really a battle of survival in these conditions, to be honest. <laughs> We're standing water, yuck. Very light at the front end, through the slot. I don't feel the wheels spin over the standing water, I just can't get the throttle on. Mm. Trying not to get the car sliding too much. The terrible conditions don't really seem to be favouring Owen, as the race is neck and neck. A lot of standing water here, so I'm going to have to take it really easy and it just picks up the car on the standing water. It is properly knife edge stuff. Nice stop, Simon. But don't celebrate just yet. Last corner. Sliding as usual, trying to get the power down. That's Simon's last corner, so who's going to win? <laughs> Well, Simon, it looked pretty hairy out there. And it's typical, isn't it, right? We stopped filming the race and it's dry now. So, how was it? Uh, hairy doesn't even come anywhere close. If that looked hairy for you standing and watching, then you needed to be sat here. I spent <laughs> all day on a knife edge and, yeah, tomorrow I think I need some counselling. Really? Did you almost lose it a couple of times? <sighs> I think it was more than a couple, yeah. So, do you want to know your time? You probably don't, but I'm going to tell I'd, you anyway. I'd lie if I was saying no. So your time was 1 minute 52.85. Okay. Not bad, but were you faster than the car? Well, we're going to find out. Okay then, you did 1 minute 51.50. So you beat him, but only by just over a second, which yeah. isn't particularly good considering you were in the car. Yeah, no, I've got to say that's a pretty poor show, but... Just... <laughs> did you just admit that? Yeah, 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 <laughs> but I think it was massively hairy in this car. It's quite nice power sliding in the corners, but the straights were pretty hairy with aquaplaning and absolutely no grip at all. Actually, Owen's right about having no grip. In fact, when we got back to the office and checked our footage, we noticed he failed to stop properly at the braking box. So we gave him a two second penalty, which meant his lap time became one minute, 53.5 seconds. And so, in the end, the bike actually won. Click on the videos to watch our track battles of the BMW M5 versus the S1000RR and the Lamborghini Gallardo against the Aprilia RSV4. Click on the play icon to watch our latest video and on the Auto Express logo to subscribe to our channel.